What's good, y'all? So we're back with the Sensational Talk podcast, episode two. And today I'm joined by my lovely guest, Jenny, also known as Thin Jen, across all social media platforms. What's going on, Jen? Hey, how are you? Good. You? Good. No, I'm doing good. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to do this with you. Thank you for showing up. Yeah, yeah. This is great. So Thank you for having me. Seriously. You're very welcome. So let's get right into it. Um, how did you start social media? So my social media took off publicly about a year and a half ago in July of 2022, but I had had a ThinGen Instagram page. Um, a lot of people don't know about it because it was private for my whole weight loss journey. I had been posting, it was only for women, so it was private, and I only accepted people who were recommended by people that I knew, so it was it was a very vulnerable page. I posted my weight loss, my, what I ate, my weight. I was very accountable to those women. Um, and through the process of that, they saw me go through my process um, of, I, I should probably back up about the fact that the reason I'm named Thin Gin, because a lot of people are like, where did the name come from? So Thin Gin is because I used to be 300 pounds. So I, my journey on social media started when I began my process of losing weight mm -hmm. on social media through weight loss surgery. But even before social media, I was working on my weight loss journey. I was probably about 13 years ago. And then when I had weight loss surgery and skin removal surgery, I decided to, for honestly, I started it for myself. It was accountability. I needed people to be in my corner and watching me, watching my weight, mm -hmm. posting it, being accountable. I even put in like my calories, what I was eating, giving them examples of that so that I could succeed. And I knew for me personally, that was what I was looking for. So I started that small Instagram page and Thin Gin came about because I was just typing in a <laughs> random name into the Instagram um, system and my, my first initial type was skinny Jenny because I go by Jenny. I go by Jenny. My friends call me Jenny. That's what I go by, but it was taken. And so I just went with thin Jen and, um, that page was wonderful. A huge, huge, huge part of my success were the women that were there. I have actually in those years that I was on that page, coached many women who also went through weight loss surgery. Was this the private page? This is the private page. This is the private page. Yeah, it's still there, but I, it's, I'm not active on it anymore. I probably started it about five years ago. So, so when did you decide that you wanted to be public with your weight loss? Actually, journey? I actually it was after I'd had weight loss surgery. If I'm being very honest, I was very, very nervous that it was going to fail, that I was going to fail. And that um, I had weight loss surgery in May of 2019, and I started the Instagram page in August of 2019. I had already lost weight, and I hadn't told maybe like four or five inner circle people that I even had the weight loss surgery because there was so much fear in me that it was going to fail, that I was going to fail yet again at my attempts on losing weight. Um, I had already been, I'd lost 90 pounds at one point. I started at 295. I lost 90 pounds over a two year period of time where I, I just diet and exercise, count calories, exercise. And I hit about 205 and I stuck there. You plateaued. I plateaued for months and months, 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 six months. I was working with a dietitian, um, a registered bariatric doctor, a non-surgical bariatric doctor through that the time. And she would even look, I would count every calorie, every workout. I had friends that could see my logs and it was just as if my body was like, you're done. 205 is where you're going to stay, which was, I was very happy at that size, but I wanted to be a little bit healthier. I wanted to be a little bit smaller just simply because I still felt a lot of struggle in my movements. Mm -hmm. And so I had lost 90 pounds, plateaued. And for a few years, I kind of stuck in like the 220, 230 range. It was just kind of a comfortable range where my body was like, you're good here, but I wasn't going to lose anymore. And then I was in a car accident um, five and a half years ago, and I broke my leg, I broke my knee, I tore my ACL, tore my meniscus, and was 
sedentary for about a year and a half. I figured that would, that would set you back a little bit on the on the journey. For not sure, being able like to. it was so str- it was so frustrating because I'd been working so hard to being active that the the slowdown it immediately packed on pounds once I stopped moving and I was eating again like normal but not exercising. I, it was a struggle. I put back on about seventy pounds, well, and that's, it was that's that's a lot of progress lost. It was really, it was really, it was really hard. It was a really hard time. Not only the fact that I was gaining back weight, but I was struggling with trying to make sure that I could get back to walking. I couldn't drive because it was my right leg. And it was, it was a couple years period of time where it was a struggle. And during my recovery is when my doctor actually is the one that approached me about weight loss surgery. I'd been seeing him for years. And he said, Jenny, I know you know what you need to do. You do the things that need to be done. And I understand that you're at a point now where you're starting to feel defeated because you are gaining back. He said, have you ever considered weight loss surgery? I think you would be a really good candidate for it. And that's when I went home and I researched it and I was like, okay, well, why would I do this? What are the consequences? What are the, what are some of the, the downfalls, pros, cons? I weigh all of those things. And it was at that time that I decided, yeah, I'm going to get a consultation and I went in for it. And, um, it's probably, No, not probably. It's the best decision ever made for my health. So let me ask you, um, I know that there are a lot of weight weight loss surgery procedures. Which procedure did you get? Okay, so there are three main ones. So you have gastric bypass, which is where they reroute things in your stomach. That's the one I hear about most. I think it was probably one of the more common ones up front. Um, I'm not sure, but... They reroute it. Your stomach remains the same, but they reroute some things. I'm I, honestly, that's not what I had, so I'm not. I didn't research that as much. Then there's also lap band, which a lot of people have heard of. But yeah, when of I was also. looking into it, I was told that lap band kind of was going out. They slip. It's not the most. It's not the highest success rate. Gives some people problems. And so then the third option is VSG. It's called vertical sleeve gastrectomy. VSG. And that is where your 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 stomach is. The way I was described, he said, you're going to take your stomach to, from about the size of a football to the size of a banana. They cut out 80% of That's your stomach. It is. It tremendously cuts down on how much you can eat. And, and honestly, kind of the hunger cues that your stomach gives you were also cut down. For me, the 90 pounds, the 90 pounds that I lost... I went to bed every night hungry and I would mentally lay in bed crying sometimes. And I would say, if I'm going to lose weight, if I'm ever going to be healthy, I have to go to bed hungry and I'll wake up and be smaller in the morning. And that's how I lost the initial 90 pounds. I knew what needed to be done, but I was hungry and it was just a struggle. So having the weight loss surgery gave me, to me, it was like the last tool in my tool belt to get me to the point where I could be successful. And I and then that's what I did. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy, and so right now today, mm-hmm. has your eating gone back to normal, or are you still limited as to what you can eat? Oh no, like no, no, what's, no. What's it's the very, max? very limited. Very, very limited. Um, so you I, get full quick, very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You can ask anybody that sits down at a dinner with me. It's it, thankfully it's, most of the yeah. A lot of women who get hangry. Um, they, I don't think that's, that's the route they want to go because, (laughs) but the good thing is, is you don't feel a whole lot of hunger. Like that was the sensation that I needed to be removed from my system because then I feel satisfied. How long from when you got the surgery did it take for you to see the weight actually dropping off? I hit my goal in a year, almost exactly a year. So when I went into surgery, I believe I was 273 the day of, no, I was 273 before my pre-op diet. They require you to do like an extensive diet for two weeks, almost all liquid protein shakes. I lost 10 pounds in that process. And so day of surgery, I was 263. And so I went into surgery and when I fast forward, got to the point where I felt my goal, my personal goal with my doctor, I hit that in a year. And that's when I started nice. researching having the loose skin removed. Congratulations. That's, that's, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, like I said, it's one of the best decisions I ever made for my health. It's not for everybody. And, I, you know, obviously everybody has their own journey. But for me personally and for a lot of people that I know, it's, it's, a, it's a help. It's not a, it is not the easy way, which is what you hear a lot. 
It's the easy way. It's the easy way out. It's not easy. You still have to diet. You still have to exercise. There are ways that you can cheat your stomach. It's kind of crazy, but like there are certain foods that you can eat that will put in a ton of calories into your system, but not fill you up. You know, for instance, like ice cream, give you an example. You can eat a lot of calories of ice cream because it's almost a liquid sugar form. And so you can take in a lot of calories. There are things that you can eat that will break your success. So you still have to make the right food choices. You still have to exercise. You still have to move your body. And so, but it's just that one, that one aspect for me personally. So even with the surgery, could you potentially go back up to that same weight? A hundred percent. Absolutely. I still struggle with my weight. I still struggle with my weight. Like I'm, I still gain. I still, I've had regain. It's called, usually people call it regain. So you have some regain. At one point when I was first initially losing weight, I got so small. I got smaller than I wanted to be. I was probably, I was probably about 30 pounds under what I wanted to be. It's probably about 30 pounds under what I am right now. And my face was gaunt, but I knew I had researched. I knew that people have a tendency to have some regain. And so I just kind of let my body do its thing. I did the right thing. I exercised, I ate and it shed the weight. And then I got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm on a good caloric intake. I'm exercising where I land is where my body is telling me it's comfortable. And that's where I sit pretty much now. Do you feel like it's, it's hard to keep the weight off? Absolutely. It is a struggle every day. I still count my calories sometimes just to keep, just to keep my, you know, just to keep a temperature on it. Um, no, for sure. It's as if your body genetically for me, it's, I can gain weight so fast, so easily, even still to this day. See, I wish that was my problem. I I had the opposite problem growing up. Like I've posted pictures of me when I was like 23, I was this height, but 143 pounds. Like I was a bag of bones right now. I'm, I'm hovering at like this morning because I have this thing where I got to weigh myself every day I do because too. I <laughs> fear going back down to a you bag of bones. Way? Wow. So See, this morning that's I was what I do when I stand on the scale. And, but it, it's like, I have some kind of body dysmorphia if that's, if that's what it's called, because to it me, is. I still see me as 140 something pounds. Like I, it don't matter. My, my, my goal weight, I want to say is like, 310 and to some people that sounds crazy really? but my I, I because i'm it. six seven yeah my yeah, frame yeah. I, I think i could take you it if like i work out. out yeah i, I yeah. think so but um it was definitely the opposite for me like uh some i'm sorry people i are, talked uh, over you i didn't hear how much did you say you weighed this morning um 257 I'm going to start asking you questions. 257. Like, was as, there something you that you did in place to like help yourself gain that weight like that? Like so that you felt I think good? I think I was bullied into gaining weight. There was this one instance that I could remember. I was walking from my best friend's house and I walked by these two young ladies. And, you know, I, I, I always walk with my head down because I'm kind of shy. So I, I, when I initially see women coming, I just walk by them and act like I'm texting on my yeah. phone, but I'm really not. Yeah. And when they get by me, one of them yells out, why is he so mother skinny? Oh my God. Like she yelled, I'm pretty sure everybody so heard sorry. it. And from that day on, uh, I joined the YMCA. I, I worked at the YMCA, but working there, I had access to the gym mm-hmm. whenever I wanted. So I started taking mass gainer shakes and I don't know if it was because I was working out and taking the shakes that I started to pack on size or my age just caught up with me. Yeah, I'm yeah, still yeah. not sure. It could be a combination of but both. It could have been a combination <laughs> yeah. of both. But um, as I started to fill out, I realized, and this is also a question for you. Mm-hmm. I realized people started to treat me different, like better. Like women started to notice me. I like, I'm not going to say no one noticed me, but like back it's then, it's, it's different. different. You can like tell f- if you've been both. Like I feel like some women, when they come down in weight, like it, they get the attention from men that they, from the shit men, of course, that would probably otherwise like shit on them when they were at their highest weight. And me, when I was at my lowest weight, I would get shit on and, and called all kinds of names. Like it, yeah. It forced me to put on the weight because I, I didn't 
I didn't want that for myself anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a struggle because society kind of has a standard where they feel like everybody seems to need to fit into a certain box, but for me I, I'm I would be lying if I said that the aesthetic of being smaller never appealed to me. I always wanted to feel and look fit. I've always struggled with my weight from the moment I turned like 13. But in the end, the final decision for me to get to where I am now was I just needed to feel better. I was in my 20s, 20s and struggling to climb stairs, to to go out and do things with friends, get on. I got kicked off a roller coaster because I was too big at one point in front of a huge friend group. It was hard for me. I never felt, um, a lot of people think, a lot of people think and they assume, oh, well, you felt unattractive and so now you've lost weight and you feel attractive and so you do things for attention. I never felt unattractive. I never felt um, ugly or anything personally. Now people outside of me would say that kind of so stuff. So you were big in your in in your teenage years. I mean, big as far as maybe like teenage size goes. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't super overweight. I would probably been in like the 160, 170 range for a 13 year old. So I wasn't heavy until I got probably into my twenties and then I started gaining um, pretty rapidly. And then that's when I hit two ninety five. And I think I had weight loss surgery when I was about 35, 35. In your, in, in your opinion, what do you feel was that moment that made you say, I got I to gotta cut the weight, something got to happen? I very clearly remember. I remember where I was and I remember when it happened. I stood on the scale. It was in my laundry room. And it said 295. And I thought to myself, I will never let that scale say 300 pounds. And that was it. That was it. I was ready. I was ready. It's hard. It's so it's hard. hard keeping, it's, it's hard so keeping up with the gym. Hard. And people even now think, well, you hit your goal, and now here it is. No, I fight every day to stay healthy, to stay active, to be in the gym, to eat right. All of those things are a constant in my life. Like, it's, there's no such thing as, well, I just eat whatever and, you know, It'll be fine. No, I, I, I have to monitor it at all times. How often are you going to the gym now? Nowadays? Currently, right now, um, I started a weightlifting program with a personal trainer in the beginning of January 2023. Um, my, my weight loss journey, when I was actually losing the weight, I was very cardio heavy. I did a lot of walking. I set a goal in 2021 of walking 500 miles. And then 2022, I walked 750 miles. Those Oof. were... You're better than me. I'm not walking. No, I, 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 I avoid anything that I feel is going to make me bony again. Any, I don't do no cardio, cardio nothing. Right, exactly. No. no, I was trying to burn the calories. And that was, for me, in, in, in the beginning, when you're heavy, walking a mile can be hard. It can be hard on your knees. It can be hard on your feet. It can be hard on your back. And I just kept telling myself, I can do this half mile. I can do this mile. And that's when I set my goals. And that's what I did. And that's how I lost it. Well, then I hit my goal and I've got, you know, loose skin and people commenting, oh, all you got to do is lift weights. All you got to do is it's lift weights. It's not that simple. And so in 2023, I thought, let's do this. Let's do this. I knew I was going to be taking on probably a three to five year process in answer. I, like, you, can't, you can't answer someone when they say, well, if you just did weightlifting, it would fill in your loose skin. You won't have loose skin anymore. And I can't, I can't say, I can say, and I did say, I don't think that's how it always works, you know? Um, but why not try? Why not try? Why not take on the challenge? But it's not a challenge. You don't go into weightlifting and think, right. I can accomplish this in a month. No, 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 no. I knew when I started that program, I'm in at least for three to five years. And then I'll be able to truly answer the question, does weight because the the gym that I work out in the lady who owns it she also has lost like two hundred pounds and I came to her and I said do you mind if I record content in your gym and I told her about my journey and where I am and she said actually I'm I'm very interested to hear your results she said because for me I have all of this loose skin and I'm trying to figure out can I work out enough to get it off 
And so she will ask me, she'll check in on me periodically. And, uh, and so I would like to be able to get to the point where I say, I, I've really tried to put in the work and you can see some gains. You can see some progress. Sometimes when you lose 130, 140, 150, 200 pounds, loose skin is skin. You need that. Or you, you, you need to have it removed if you want to have it removed. Not everybody cares about their loose skin. There are plenty I've, of people. I've heard that. When when you lose weight so rapidly, like the loose skin is one of these side effects. I don't I don't know. Does that happen if you take the weight off without the surgery? Like is loose skin still a thing? If you would have just worked out and eventually got there, would it? Would you have still? I genuinely think that comes down to genetics. I really have seen. I've because I've been doing this now for thirteen years. I've followed a lot of different people's journeys. And I've seen some women and some men who they don't even look like they used to be big. They don't have loose skin. I think a lot of that comes down to skin elasticity, age, and genetics. And so I would say that on average, I would guess anybody that gets probably over the loss of 100 pounds or more, you're going to probably have some loose skin somewhere that you can't work off. Did the doctor recommend that you chop the loose skin off or was this a decision you made? Because some people keep it. Some people, yeah, they don't have the surgery or they can't afford to get the surgery to so, chop it off. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's still, I still have my arms. I still have my loose skin on my thighs. I've not done any of those surgeries um, up to this point. For me, um, my stomach was a personal decision. Uh, I had eight pounds of skin. Like when I went to the doctor, actually it's, it's well, you mentioned body dysmorphia. There's something about having loose skin after losing that much weight when you look in the mirror and you think, you think in your head, I'm still fat, I'm still overweight, but it's just skin. The first appointment I had with my plastic surgeon and he looked at me and he said, I, I know we're eventually gonna get around to the conversation about my backside, my booty, because I had asked him, I was like, I've always had a voluptuous backside, I'm Italian, I'm built like that. I was worried that when I had the loose skin removed, I, I was like, is, is it going to make my butt flat? And he said, That's a fear I, for some. I asked for, <laughs> I asked for a BBL. I asked my plastic surgeon on my first consultation for a BBL. And he said, Jenny, you do not have enough fat on your body for me to give you a BBL. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm holding this in my hands. It's like, so I wait can a minute. Hold it. In order for a woman to get a BBL, you have to have enough fat. It's a fat on transfer. On your own body? I didn't, yes. It's I, a fat transfer. You transfer from one part of your body to your butt. Did I just teach you something? <laughs> I, you, you definitely told me some. I thought this was something anybody could go do. Like when you go get breast implants, for example, they put these on. Um, Correct. What is it? Saline? Yeah, now? yeah, What yeah. do they use you now? You can get silicone or saline. Right. Yeah. So I, I thought BBLs was something that everybody could just go in. I didn't know that. It had to come from your body. I thought they, I don't, I don't know yeah, what I thought the process women, was. a lot of women, you'll actually see a lot of women will get their stomach. They'll, they'll pull the fat from the stomach and put it into the behind. And that's why their stomach also looks flat after the procedure because they've used, the doctors have used portions of their fat from their stomach to their butt. Now, listen, I'm not a professional. I don't know if you can't use something else. But I'm pretty sure that BBL is from is, is is a fat transfer from one part of your body to another. And he said, he looked at me, he said, you have not enough, nearly enough fat on your body for me to transfer. But then didn't he say you had eight, what do you say, eight pounds? I had eight pounds of skin. Of removed. skin. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah that makes sense. But in my head, it looked like fat. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like yeah, I'm holding right. it, it's rolls. And he said, no, that's all skin. He was like, that is all skin. Once I remove that, you will see underneath that you have lost and hit your goal. It's just it's just the skin that was stretched out that mm -hmm. has nothing to fill it in. Yep, exactly. And so also that's a part of the weightlifting portion of things. Imagine if you lost, let's say maybe 70 of the pounds is on your stomach and you just lost those 70 pounds on your stomach. You're not gonna gain 70 pounds of abs. Like it's not gonna fill in that much skin if you've lost 70 pounds of fat you're not gonna necessarily be you're not gonna fill out the skin with so muscle. what you saying you told him you wanted a bbl correct 
I did. Yeah, so originally. Yeah. we follow each other on social media. So I see the comments that people leave under your videos. Yeah. And a lot of them really believe in their hearts that you do, in fact, have a BBL. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think I actually think that part of how I've come to where I am and how I'm built the way I am is a, a combination of things. Um, I did a series on my page in December that was genuinely for me to be able to just tell people when they ask that question, oh, great, I did a series on that in December. Go watch it. It was six parts. I put the whole thing on YouTube. It's pictures from when I was 18 on, from when I was smaller, from when I gained weight, to when I lost weight, to when I had the skin removed, and where I am now. And you can see the progress of it and how I was shaped the way I was. I've always been shaped like this. And so uh, I think that the reason that people think that is because I have become so small in my waist. Another thing that happens when you have loose skin removed is they remove, I, I think it's fat cells that get removed. And so in part of my regain, uh, my, my behind is much, much bigger right now than it was maybe like two years ago when I was at the, the, the lowest weight when I regained, the majority of it went to my thighs and my hips and my butt. And so I'm not complaining about the regain because it I just- I don't think just, anybody <laughs> is complaining. Just, but because of that, I think that's probably because there's the loose skin and then there's the regain. And then it's just the way it's just, it's just reproportioned itself. And that's why it looks the way it looks and it moves the way that it moves. That's why people think it's a BBL. But it's, it's so uniquely me- in my journey and my genetics and where I, how I was built before and how I'm built now, it's just me. It's just natural. It's just the way I am. I guess they don't want to believe that anything is real anymore because a lot of what we see on Instagram and TikTok and all these social media platforms are women who got these surgeries done and I guess, quote unquote, fake bodies, but there are still women out here that are natural, but given it's so saturated with women who have done surgery, people don't know what's real or not because it's, yeah. it has gotten so good to where you can't they tell. They look good. I, I still look at women's pictures sometimes and I'm like, I wonder if that's real, but I don't think it matters. But you know, you know what it is to me? I don't have an issue with BBLs. My issue when it comes to BBLs is some women, they'll get these like, I want to say look like ants almost. They'll have like stick legs. And then this oh, big yeah. BBL, if it's not proportioned, anything that's not proportioned, it just it just looks crazy to me. Like if I was five foot one and had size 17 shoes, <laughs> it would look crazy. And it's not that. It's bad, but it just I don't it just don't look like it fit. Like you can get it proportioned to your body. You don't have to have and like some, this big shelf. Some women like that's their their ideal body shape. Like that's what they picture, those small legs without the cellulite mm -mm. and the big bubble butt. That's <laughs> their image of beauty. More power to you, sis. Like like I I totally get that. Uh, you know, just as a woman. I get that for sure. Um, but for me, I mean I've always had, I've always had saddlebags and thighs. My, my thighs poked out. This was my biggest insecurity. I've never heard of that. I've never heard that name until I saw that video. That's I'm how like, we met. Saddlebags. That's how we yeah. met. That's the video we met on. You know what? I'm like saddlebags. And I'm think the only thing I could think when I think of saddlebags is like, are, 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 are they talking about the things that are on the side, the side of horses? The of the horses. Because if you look at a horse, they've got those two uh -huh. bags on the side. And I think that's probably where they get the name. I don't know. But I did a saddlebag video that you stitched. Yeah. Um, and I will have to say, it was it is one of my most viral videos. And I took a moment with myself. And you got banned when I when I posted I that video. I so got you didn't banned even... because I was with Jen and Tiffany about a week after I posted it. And TikTok banned me for three weeks. I'm thankful I got it back. Um, but yes, I was right around the time you had a video that you stitched it and it went viral yeah. with millions of views and I was off TikTok and yep, everybody was like, who is this it. person? Yeah. But cause when I went to the, to tag the tag name, you had, it had like that little shadow. I'm like, yeah, band. Yeah. I just posted this the other I day. Know, like she's going already. I know. 
Um, but for me as a teenager, it was probably my biggest insecurity was the fact that my legs didn't look like everybody else's. And my, you know, I had my small waist and my thighs went out a bit on the hips. A lot of people call them hips now. They'll be like, oh my God, look at the hips, look at the hips. <laughs> I, did a, I did a video where I was like, do you think these are hips or thighs? Because I've always thought they were thighs because of where they are. Um, but people call it both. But in that video, I, I grabbed them and, and the comments. That was wild, man. I couldn't believe that, how that many wild. men were like, we love this. And I was like, for me, even me, I'm going... No. Are they are they for real? Like they actually like yeah, this shape real. on a woman? Men men appreciate stuff that I think I think women put themselves down more than they need to cuz we <laughs> it's not that I don't want to say we don't care about this stuff like it but we really don't care. Like there there are a lot of men like me mm -hmm. that share the same opinion when I post things people don't believe it because they I don't know if they just don't believe a guy that looks like me whatever i may look like because that this is the things that i read could could no way in shape form be attracted to this kind of right woman or thing cellulite to me has always been attractive if a woman breast sag i don't care i don't if they have stretch marks across the waist and it looks like a wwe title belt <laughs> <laughs> or across the, you know, it, I don't care. Like people, like it's still that's still refreshing for me to hear you say. Like it's still in my head. I'm 41 years old, and my whole life, of course, I grew up in the the 80s and the 90s, where stick figure women were the thing, and that's what all you saw represented on the TV. And so, even hearing a man say that was sh is still sometimes like, you can't be serious. I see the comments, and I think. They can't really like this, like because I look at it and my teenage self and my early twenty self goes, cellulite's terrible. It's bad. Well, and there's plenty who still say that in the comments too. They they, are, of course, they, of they, course. And it's always from the same accounts, the, the yeah. no faces. Yeah. But people, some people really find it gross. Like I, I post women, and I've, I've even in the video I stitch you, I've seen like vomit faces. Oh um, yeah. Like for what? For, for what? what? For what? Just to be mean, to be hateful. I don't think, I mean, it's just, why did that woman say that to you when you were skinny? For what? I bet you looked awesome back then. And there would be, you know, something that I've thought about now being on social media is what I've realized is how often our viewpoint on attractiveness of humanity is based off of just like movies, media, what we ingest on the media and not actually like real life people and experiences and the, the opening of social media such as TikTok and Instagram, it opened my eyes to how many, we're talking real people. These are real people on the other side of their phones who are saying things that are different. And then you think maybe the voices of the masses aren't quite being represented on media. And that's where my journey started when I started for myself, Eric, I didn't wear shorts for 15 years because of your legs. Because I hated them. I hated them. I hated them. They made me so self-conscious. I knew when I was wearing shorts that people were looking at them. That's I, crazy because yeah. in, in your mind, you, you probably are thinking the worst thing that they're, Oh, they think they, I'm gross. They I'm don't. disgusting. They don't. But that's, that's, I didn't hear any voices that were different than that. And after my Saddlebag video, I had women messaging me and they said, this is the first time in my life, I've had Saddlebags my whole life. I'm in my 20s, 30s, 40s. I realized, wow, um, there are a lot of people that actually like this. And they'll, they'll come mm -hmm. to me and they'll say, your confidence in your cellulite, your confidence in your thighs. I'm like, my confidence, what? My confidence is still growing. I still don't even know... You know, I'm still learning. Sometimes but people need a hero. And, 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 and sometimes people have things within themselves that they hate. But then they see, they, they see their champion up there. They see a woman who has these saddlebags. And they're like, okay, I'm looking through these comments. I see a lot of positivity. I have these too. Maybe I shouldn't. So in a sense. I had a woman tell me. I had a woman tell me she started wearing shorts again because of my page. 
a friend of mine, like a personal friend of mine, she said, Jenny, I didn't wear shorts for a really long time. And now I watch your page and I think, I'm going to wear my shorts. I'm going to wear the shorts. That was a huge thing I championed on my, on my private page is I was, I'm going to wear shorts. I'm going to wear shorts. It was, some, it was something that I had to talk myself into. And it really meant a lot to me when she said that. I was like, good, wear the shorts. Let's, let's do it. Let's champion that. Don't, don't believe the, the narrative that's being fed to us anymore. Today, when you look in the mirror, when you have no clothes on, how do you feel about yourself, honestly? Honestly. I'm proud of myself. Good. Yeah. As you should be. I'm proud come of myself. A long way. Yeah, I have come a long way. Come I've, a long way. I see, I mean, my body's not, okay, there are going to be some people that are going to try to smack me down for this. To me, I look in the mirror and I don't see a perfect body. Perfect body. You know what I mean? Whatever that may be. Exactly. Exactly. I knew you would be one of the people to be like, careful. But I look at the things that make me me, and I think, that scar, I earned it. That cellulite, that's from my grandma. That's, like, <laughs> these are the things that make me me. They make me unique. I struggled with even the fact that I had to have the scar up my stomach. I bawled. When I found that out, I cried in the plastic surgeon office. He told me, he's like, I'm not going to be able to get all the skin unless I cup all the way up your stomach. And I did not want that. I didn't want it to be obvious that I'd had the surgery. Like kind of when they do tummy tucks and they it's hide it on hidden, bikini line. Like under the bikini line. But I knew, I knew the moment I get that scar straight up my stomach, everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to know that I had a scar. Something was different. Something was off. I wasn't normal. And so now I look at, I actually thought about getting a tattoo over my scar to hide it. And the more that my identity, not my identity, I'm still very much a full person outside of social media, um, but who I am as thin gen online, my scars are part of, are part of my story. Absolutely. Like I don't, my desire to change and cover them has changed. And now I'm not ever, it's almost as if I don't even think about them anymore because they're just a part of who I am and they're a part of my story. And so when I look in the mirror, I still have that body dysmorphia. I still have moments where I'm like, I, I go back and forth. I have moments where I'm like, I feel myself. Like I feel good. I feel good in these clothes. I always wanted to wear pencil skirts and body con dresses and, mm -hmm. and, and the things that made me self-conscious in the past. I kind of wish I could have found somebody like you, a platform like you when I was growing up and maybe I would have viewed myself slightly different. For me, it was more about health than anything. Um, but there are still moments where I look at myself and I'm like, I still, I still record videos. I did a, a video, um, with your, with your sound. And I remember recording it and the sunlight hit my cellulite, the backs of my legs, <laughs> just to the point where it was like every single dent was showing. And I remember recording that video, rewatching it and thinking, I, I don't, don't think I've got is. the guts to post this. And I still did it. And I was like, I, I, need to, I need to learn better. I need to do better. I need to not be ashamed of any angle of my body. It is my body. It is what it is. When, you, when you're out with people, they see you. They know what you look Listen, like. You can't uh, hide. You can't. That's the thing with social media. They set this fake expectation of what women supposed to look like. And the things that are normal aren't normalized anymore. Like you right. can't walk around. Your breasts got to be perky. The ass got to be perky. The legs got to be tight. Don't sit down and let tight. your stomach roll. Nope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't, All of it. You, you can't have rolls when you sit down. It, you can't have back rolls when you're wearing a t-shirt. Nothing. Everything yep. is perfection. And Instagram and, and, and TikTok and all these things are fake. They don't, they don't show you what real life is and what real women look like. And a lot of the men who bully in comments, you know, the women who get their bodies altered, it's like, okay, she was big. You bullied her. Now she went under the knife. You still bully her. At what point do you draw the line to where you say, let's give these women a break? A lot of them are doing this because you punching down on them and making them feel like they aren't good enough. So now that they do this, they still not good enough. You say shit like, um, you need to give the doctor, uh, you need to get your money back. He didn't do a good job. You fucked. Here's the best thing that I think I came to realize, and, and this is probably just an in general life thought, is it doesn't matter 
what you look like, there will be people that will hate on you. Yep. Period. 100%. So why does it matter what the haters say? There's somebody I'm for to everybody. Say, I'm not allowed to say fuck them. You can say whatever you want. This is, this is Just. fuck shit, bastard. <laughs> it, don't, it don't matter however you feel. Um, I mean, seriously, like why? Those people don't hold space in my life. They don't know me. But they, they don't think know, they do. They, they don't deserve any of it. They don't deserve space in my life. They don't. That kind of voice no longer hold, holds a space in my head. Because I also know there are way more voices that will drown them out. And including my own. Once I started to believe my own confidence came from within. And I started to realize maybe what I'd been fed my whole life wasn't actually true. And it wasn't actually the way the society. And not just men. It's not just men, women. Oh, women, women hate on women a lot oh, too. Man, they oh. do. They woman do. Woman on woman violence is real. It the is. Woman on woman violence is very real. We brutal sometimes. Not we. I'm not. I don't. I don't like to talk to women like that. I like to to lift them up and be around women that lift women up. But also, there are women in my life who champion me and champion what I do, and that gives me confidence. I don't want to sit here and and, and make it sound like all my confidence coming from men online. No, no. My confidence, first and foremost, comes in understanding my own journey and where I am and how hard I have worked to get here. There's where my confidence is because I know I can do badass shit now and I can work really hard and see results. And, and other people's opinions, I'm not saying that they don't help. They do help sometimes. And I, you know, I've been in positions where people will say stuff and they'll they'll like catch that nerve and a tear will roll down and you're like I still have that I still have that feeling it still it still kind of digs at me sometimes but but there are women in my life too that you look good you look good why are you worrying about that let your people don't understand like I I spoke with somebody the other day and it's not that I don't know how to take a compliment People don't realize that when I look in the mirror, I see, I still see bony Eric. I don't see whatever handsome guy they're making me out to be. I, this is the me that I grew up. This is the me that was bullied. This is the me that got bullied in school. The smaller version of me. So even though mm -hmm. I could have X amount of DMs and people telling me how handsome they think I am or how sexy they think I am, I don't see myself that way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's a because I'm I'm humble, but I just I just don't see myself in the light. But I don't want to make them feel like their compliments aren't being heard. I'm taking it. Right. I just don't know right. how to take it. Yeah, but you can only you can only kind of you take the information in, you process it, you internalize it, you make your own decisions for yourself. How you view yourself is ultimately going to come down. Yeah, I mean, you could have anybody. They're probably not probably, but probably they're celebrities who we think are the epitome and they still have those thoughts and feelings and they can let those comments feed them. Ultimately, your self-worth is going to have to be from within. You have to take the information you're given and then figure out who you are and what you want to be and what you mm -hmm. want to do. But that, that you feel like I was a teenager. That's who I am. When I look in the mirror, that's, I still see that. I still see that big girl. I still see that big girl. Sometimes when I look in the mirror, for sure. I, I, I totally dig that. So let me ask you, since you've been on social media, you've gained a, a pretty large following. It's crazy. Like very large. I, I think on Instagram, you're over 500,000. I just, just hit, hit it yesterday. It and then million. on That's TikTok. That's crazy to me. That's so crazy. Where are you at on TikTok? Over um, seven. Yeah, yeah, over seven. Yeah. Right? So in your opinion. I should say 700,000, not seven 700, million. 700,000, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not yet. In your opinion, what has been like one of the greatest social media moments for you today? Genuinely, that saddlebag video. That saddlebag video for me was a, it was a personal, it was a personal moment. It had nothing to do with the comments or what anybody else was doing. I looked at that video. I looked at myself. I'm sitting here. Imagine I'm sitting here looking at my phone. I'm sitting in my body, in my head. I feel like the big girl still, and I'm looking at the screen. I'm remembering being 13, filling out my skin. And I'm looking at this woman on screen thinking, we finally figured out how to accept ourselves. Like, that was a moment for me. I thought, 
if there was anything ever on the face of the planet that I would be proud of myself for would be the fact that the number one insecurity of when I was a teenager is what people now know me for. Like they know the fact that I have that, I'm built that way and I'm comfortable with it. And that, that, that was for me a huge moment, a huge moment. That was a personal thing. Probably anybody else that watched the video didn't think anything about that. There's no way anybody else would know that's how, that's how I viewed that. But that was a huge moment for me. What was your first viral video that, that the, hit over the millions? Yeah, that, that, the viral video that took me from, I think I probably had. So I had the, so remember I told you about the Instagram page mm -hmm. and that's how I got on TikTok because I was on that page before TikTok. Right around the time TikTok started taking off, I was following some other creators. And I was like, where are they making these videos with music? And they're like changing their pictures around and like they're doing these transitions. These are really cool. And then enough of those creators posted that they were making them on TikTok. I signed up for TikTok just for the editing software, which is hilarious at this point. But, yeah. but I was using it and then I was taking those videos and posting it onto my Instagram. And so my TikTok was public at one point, but didn't have any following. I, was, I wasn't even interacting on TikTok. I wasn't watching videos. I was just editing the videos for my Instagram page. In TikTok. In TikTok. And I was posting them. Yeah, that was before CapCut. I don't... It was yeah. before CapCut, yeah. And so at the time, I decided to, for personal reasons, there were other things going on in my life, close my TikTok page down and make it private, and I deleted it down to 25 people, and they were all women that I knew. And um, ended up fast-forwarding, realizing I'd been shamed. I'd been shamed at that point. I'll, I'm not really going to talk about a whole lot of the personal aspects of things, but I'd been shamed for putting myself out there uh, for have, wearing a bikini. Why, why would you put yourself in a bikini online? You're 40, blah, blah, blah. You, pe more people see you at the beach. I don't... I don't I never yeah, get caught up my, in my that circles, my, my circles were very, very conservative. And so I, I made my page private. And then I came to a moment where I said, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm opening it back up. So I opened it back up with 25 followers. And within about the month, I was just posting some random videos and pictures, weight loss things. But I went to Miami for my 40th birthday. And I bought a dress that was pretty, you know, it was. It showed Have some I seen skin. This video? I don't know. It's. A, I don't know. Actually, have you ever seen? It's mm. called the red dress. Is is kind of what everybody referred it to. It's a red mini skirt dress, and it's got like these cutouts and these rings, and they're all kind of fabric strategically placed together. And I posted and said, just thinking about back to my fortieth birthday in Miami, and it was three pictures: front view, side view, and back view of this dress. That'll do it. That'll do That'll it. That'll do it. <laughs> Young Gravy was tagged about a thousand times because I said I was 40 and this was my 40th birthday and everybody in the comments, they didn't even have anything to do with my weight loss. I didn't even talk about weight loss. It was, it was just the fact that I was 40 and was posting myself in this dress. It went viral. And it, it, I think it's sitting probably like 3 million views at this point. And then I went back to the dress shop where I bought the dress. It was a very, very small personally owned boutique by a lady. Um, and she, I went in and I said, girl, everybody's asking where I got this dress. And it was, it was a black lady. So it was a black owned small business. And I went in, I mean, she and I had spent 30 minutes. I told her I'm going to Miami. She had a small shop. There was nobody in there. So when I picked out the dress that day, we, I tried on stuff. I'd come out and she'd be like, Oh girl, you look so good. And she was like, <laughs> the red dress came out and she said, that's the one. And I said, okay, I'm gonna wear it to Miami. And then when I come back, I'll come, I'll come show you. Wait, well, where I, was this shop at? Um, it's in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's shut down now. She has one location left in Clarksville, Kentucky. Um, and so her, I took the video in and showed her the dress that went viral. And I said, everybody wants to know where to buy this dress. And she's like, well, you can come to my website. But she was a small business. And I, unfortunately, I think she got a little overwhelmed. The orders came in and got really overwhelming. And they, I tried to help can, her. Yeah. yeah. I went into her shop at the time for probably the next month. I, and I went in and I went live on TikTok and I tried on clothes for like four hours, and um and she was she was amazing. Her name's Tina and I absolutely love her. And she had she genuinely her Shout shop's got Tina. some beautiful clothes, and I'll still go shop there sometimes if I'm in town. Um and so I showed her the video and on the video she's like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Tell him to go blah blah blah. And 
that video went viral. That video went viral where everybody was like, oh my gosh, I love the fact that you were so kind to a small business. I was like, listen, I was just trying to help her business out. And so I worked with her for a few months on making sure like orders came in and such. And then from there, once you post, you know how it is. Once you post a video, comments come mm -hmm. in, you're like, oh, well, I guess they had a question about this because my scar showed in the, the red dress that I was wearing. Well, what's that scar? What you got there? Well, I have an answer to that. So I'll make a video in response. Right. And I went from, I think when that video went viral, I jumped up to about 50,000 followers within a week. It's fast how you could grow on TikTok. So fast. Like I, I think didn't that, know I, what to expect. I think that's one of the easy, easiest platforms to grow on. Now it's it's like weird now. I don't know it's what the algorithm is doing is. I don't know what it is either. But Instagram, like even during the were you post or pre pandemic? TikTok. Um TikTok started in twenty twenty two. July of twenty twenty two is when okay, I Okay, this was post so, then. So yeah, yeah. yeah, pre post. Yeah, I think that was like the the hot era, mm -hmm. like during mm -hmm. pandemic. When everybody's sitting inside and needs because, something to do. Yeah, yep. I think because it it is very. It took me like I think two years to to hit over a million followers as mm -hmm. to where Instagram. It took me like five months. Mm -hmm. So that it's it's definitely a different audience on For TikTok sure. from Instagram. But it just takes one video sometimes. Yeah. That's all it that's all it was for me. I didn't I had a full time sometimes job and I was just doing my thing and and so it took off and it was kind of at the time I I you know sat down and asked myself what what do I want to do with this? Where do I want this to go and what questions do I want to answer? What questions do I not want to answer? And I just made videos and I kept making videos and then more would go viral and then more people would follow and I'm sitting here thinking mm -hmm. I guess I have a story to tell and people want to hear it. So the I'll number just keep looks crazy it. too. When you look at it, you're like, okay, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, seven. Even when, when people would come in or, or they would say, you know, I, I only got you know this little thousand followers. First of all, if you put a thousand people like right in this room <laughs> where we at now, it's a lot you're of people. Not wrong. Don't get caught up in the numbers. Yeah, like seven over seven hundred thousand. That's a lot. So but many people. people downplay numbers because everybody wants like the high follow count. Like they're, yeah. they're chasing the high follow count. Mm -hmm. So I've never chased the count. How yeah. do you feel since being on social media that life has changed for you, good or bad? Oh my goodness. That's such a big answer. Uh, that's such a big question. The answer to that. Let me ask you a question that, that may be easy to answer. Okay. So you've been asked to participate in other podcasts before correct i have yeah i have you did not i did not this is my first one you're the you first one i accepted for mine i was so, uh, bells on when you came when I, you posted I that you know. were doing a podcast i was like that's a podcast i would go on but but, but you and i had a relationship in conversation once you stitched my video and it went viral we became mutuals mm -hmm. and then we started having conversations and then i started watching your content and realizing this is what i'm here for like i'm here for the body positivity and this is somebody that like i feel like isn't going to try to twist what i'm saying to use it against me it was a trust thing it was a trust thing the other podcasts that i were invited on were mostly from people that i didn't know or didn't follow and it's definitely and a lot of uh misogynistic podcasts out there um i see these podcasts where you know it's gentlemen i'm not going to name any names but it's just gentlemen and they have like a a whole slew of women around the table and they're just bashing them a lot of the a lot of the times they get you know only fans creators to come up mm -hmm. young ladies who do only fans and then just to belittle them and make them seem like they're idiots. Good thing I've not seen those. Uh, I've never seen that a before. Lot. But I'm telling you, I would be livid. I don't. I don't. I would. I would they, not sit and let a man speak to me that way. I feel like when women have the title of, I guess some would call it like sex work or what OnlyFans yeah, is. Yeah, they call that that. They automatically get a bad rap, mm -hmm. like. You're like the the lowest of the lowest. Like you doing fatherless behavior. How could you? So yeah. a lot of people know that you have what people say. The link is in the bio. Yeah. You have an OnlyFans page. I do have an OnlyFans. Yeah. What made you decide to get into that? Sure. So for me, 
um, I, the TikTok is what took off first. And then it was, people were saying, you need to start an Instagram. You need to start an Instagram. And I was like, why do people want me to start an Instagram? Damn people, man. <laughs> they wanted to DM me because you can't DM someone on TikTok unless, unless you're mutuals. Yep. And I realized the moment I opened my Instagram, that's where the questions were. Do you make content? You make content? I didn't even know what they meant. I was like, what do you mean? Do Did I they make? ask you if you had a Twitter? A lot of people. Oh, yeah. What's oh, a Twitter? Oh, yeah. Twitter. Because they, they, Ooh, they, yeah. they people that's love Twitter because the, 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 what a, what that's where they find the free stuff, stuff and people love they cheap, free they stuff. They cheap over there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. No, people would ask. I, I actually had to research when people were saying, do you have a Twitter? I was like, why do they want to, why do they care for, I didn't oh, know any of this, the Eric. Wild, wild I was still, Twitter. I was still naive. I was still naive at the time. This is a year and a half ago. I just left the church probably about two years ago. I did, I did not ago. know about Twitter either. Yeah. I didn't, I, I never understood why because- I have Twitter now. I don't. I don't have a following there, but I just have it just to like browse, like how sure. some people just have TikToks to browse. But the madness on Twitter from <laughs> from nudity, it's anything to goes sex territory, to like full on deaths. Like people oh, post gosh. everything there. I'm I like, don't scroll Twitter. this is this is a wild place. It is a wild place. And so when they started asking me for content, so it's it's funny. The first video I ever sold for money of my body was a dude that had emailed the, I had put an email. I created an email because I had to, when I made the Instagram account, emailed (laughs) me and he said, can you have someone follow you around with a video camera in this dress? I'll pay you 50 bucks for three minutes. And I was like, this dude wants to watch me walk in clothes. Like it was clothes. I was, why not? Why not? I mean, sure. And I sold him 10 videos And he just picked the outfit out and I would walk around and then the questions would come in. Hey, will you walk on your treadmill in a thong? Hey, will you do this nude? Hey, will you do this? And the more questions that came and the more requests came, the more time I had to think, what would I be okay with? What would I, what what would I do? What would I be okay and feel comfortable selling? And then for me, OnlyFans, specifically OnlyFans, I signed up for because I felt like it was kind of a filter for people. I didn't have to check anybody's ID. I didn't have to make sure that their card was valid. Honestly, OnlyFans was just a platform for me to not have to worry about the logistics of the the business portion Mm -hmm. of it and just do my thing. I could put my stuff out there and I felt like OnlyFans was that paywall that I needed. That's where the OnlyFans portion of things came in because before I was just sending videos. Isn't it wild people would pay you for... Certain stuff that you want just I to walk still, with clothes on. I still constantly make content in clothing. I leggings, dresses, satin. There's a huge portion of society and men who very much enjoy the mystery of a female body. People don't realize that a lot of OnlyFans creators they don't get fully nude, and they to and and they don't have to in order to make oh, the money. Hate the hate the fact that I'm not nude on my OnlyFans. The hate. It's visceral, the comments that I get when they come up. But let me let me tell you, Eric, all you got to do is read the bio before you pay your $6. But that See, seems to be too much when somebody's not thinking with their head. So let's get, in, let's get into that, right? Yeah. So you have your OnlyFans set at a certain price. Yep, $5.99. You've shared- $6. You've shared screenshots with me of things- Crazy things that men have said to you because you're hateful, horrible. Because your subscription price is low, but when they get in, they're upset that they got to pay more. But in your bio, it clearly says clearly what's stated. inside, but they still don't read. Yep. So yep. they're not reading and they're insulting and you because yep. of yep. something that's already there. It's, I, I, I tell them I did my due diligence. You should have read the bio. It's six dollars. It's the cost of a cup of coffee. If that's re- if you're really really pressed, I'll block you and you'll get your six dollars back. But you should have read the bio. Like it's all there. It very clearly says you're not going to see my ass. It's censored on the wall. You have to pay to uncover it for six dollars. You get I answer every one of my DMs. I'm one of the very few content creators on OnlyFans. I run my own page, one hundred percent by myself. My paid page. So for six dollars a month. I will answer every one of your DMs, every one of your questions. I am honest. 
Every single thing that you buy on my OnlyFans page, you know what you're getting before your money goes into it. Because I'm also a person that understands the value of money. Like I know that I don't, a lot of people think that we judge the people who are paying for our content. Like I'm just going to take their money, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not how I view my subscribers. Some do. Some do. Not me. I view my, 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 my subscribers are from every walk of life every age, every race, every, and most of them are genuine people. They're kind. We have good conversations. They just maybe don't have real life opportunities or connections. And, and some of them just want to talk. And so I don't chat endlessly on my OnlyFans for $6, but if you want to talk, I will answer <laughs> you. A lot of people expect yeah. a lot for $6. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of like when you, People are upset at things where you could look at other life scenarios and relate related to that same very five ninety nine. Let's just say you go to a nightclub. Most of the times, ladies are free, right? But us, we gotta pay to go in. But then when you go in, you still gotta pay for shit. You, you gotta still buy gotta buy drinks. buy drinks. So you're upset. For you to be upset at something like that, then you got to be upset when you pay your $10 to get in the club and the drinks ain't free. Right. It just you don't tip, work you're like that. you tipping the person that's dancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for $6 to me, that's why I set my price as low as I did. Now, I didn't do a free page because I wanted it be, be, to be behind a paywall because I didn't want anybody and everybody to, very, with one click, be able to find access to all of my stuff. And so I wanted to put a little bit of a paywall on it. Um, because on my wall, I'm in lingerie, you know, like you'll see peaks of the cheeks, you know, behind an emoji or you'll see it moving in a certain way. There are things on there that I feel like for $6, there's hundreds, mm -hmm. hundreds. When you open up my OnlyFans page, there's hundreds of pictures and videos, visuals. It's easily worth $6. And so you're contacting me. And then I also offer customs. And so people can contact me and order something custom. And, and so the $6 just helps me pay for the necessities to keep going. I do have a free page. What's the wildest custom somebody's asked you for that you just had to say? <laughs> this person nah, watching brother, going. That's it. Because <laughs> uh, I, I can asked, imagine. Okay, I will start by saying this. I don't kink shame. I understand that everybody kind of has their own way that they've come about to where they are mm -hmm. and why they find so many these things attractive. So any request is welcome. I will never make you feel bad, but I have very, very, very strong boundaries. I don't do a lot of things that a lot of other creators do do. Um, but like a few of a few of the examples was I, you know, somebody wanted me to smash a cake with my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, 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 like, I, I, okay, I would assume sure. that that was easy. That we, yeah, we, we could I do that. Done it, but I mean, I, I was going to charge him a little bit extra because of the cost of the cake. He didn't end up doing it, but I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'd do that. But now you get a lot of fart content, a lot of a lot of a lot of shit content, like videos of one like, me watch they shit. They want you to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's okay. That's some people. There, there are people into that. It's just for me. There's and a lot. And thankfully, the majority of the people who contact me and they ask me, okay, so I have a kink. And I'm like, tell me. It's fine. Just tell me. I won't judge. But then I'll very respectfully say, that's not something I'm comfortable with. And I, for the people who ask the kinky the kinky things, they are always respectful. I've never had anybody mad at me for saying no. I know someone who shit it in a bucket plenty times for money. And I'm like, get it how you get it, baby. But I... I so there I, I are women that do it. I, I Go don't, for I it. Don't, I don't know, man. I just can't. It already feels crazy putting it in the toilet. Like I can't <laughs> just do it in a bucket. I'm not, not personally into that, but you know. But the requests come in. Yeah, um, the feet content. I didn't realize how popular feet were. Oh yeah, there's a big oh, market. Oh, for, that's big, 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 big. And and I was like, sure, absolutely. And then some people are like, do you care? What do you know that people are masturbating to your videos i'm like okay like that that's they'll masturbate just to your big toe which is wild yeah, yeah which is wild. i can't control what other people I can't, do and I, it, I just you know, can't. it's just a part of nature i mean you um, like what you like i'm a, i'm also very sex positive i'm body positive and i'm sex positive i see no need to make people you know feel ashamed for the way that they they feel and the, the things that turn them on yeah we, we i'm not i'm not gonna be the one to judge <laughs> Not me. I used to. 
Oh, yeah, I used to be the judger. Yeah, but people, we live in a world where we shouldn't judge, and we judge people because we don't understand certain things. I, I could never understand why, you know, a, a foot or the bottom of a foot, because I, a lot of these foot fetish videos, sometimes they just want to see the bottom of your feet, like just the, scrunching in and out the soles. Like they turn the, the the soles, I saw more soles picture than I do the top of my feet. I always thought it was like the toenails and how cute the pet, right. no, it's the soles. Like, yeah, 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 they like the bottom of the feet. Uh, Someone asked me to send, uh, somebody hit me up on you Instagram. Some, you got some big ass feet too, Listen, dude. Some, somebody Eric's hit me up on fans. Instagram <laughs> and they they wanted to buy pictures of my feet. I'm like, it ain't for me, brother. I, I You know, I, I respect what you asking for. But the but, other thing is, is I, and this is something that I would like to put out there for other content creators, especially females. I watched a video one time on TikTok where a girl said that a man on her OnlyFans page asked her for fart content and she wasn't sure she was comfortable. And he sent her $2,000 because you can only send a $100 tip at a time. He sent her 20 $100 tips and said- But you can send it back to back? Yes. Wow. Yeah. And, and, she, and he said, I want you to- sit in front of the camera and I want you to open up and I want you to fart directly into the camera. And that girl said that she did it for that money. And I was commenting that you should never, ever under any circumstance feel obligated to do anything on OnlyFans. On my OnlyFans, if you send me money and you say, this is what I want to see, I'm sorry, I don't show that. You shouldn't have sent me the money and I can't send it back. You can't, ref you can't as a creator, you cannot refund money that's been sent to you on OnlyFans. You can't refund it. They can sometimes request a refund, but once it's sent, so I've had to tell guys, you sent that, but I don't do nude. Like, I don't know what to tell you. You can use that money on some some of my content that I do do. It is okay to have strong boundaries. And 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 I know people are like, well, you do OnlyFans. Well, I still have very strong boundaries. I could boundaries. imagine a lot, of, a lot of men will be highly upset thinking that because the idea of OnlyFans, of course, is to see what they can't see anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And they, they're like, Okay, now I can see her naked can and see to it. hear They're that. like, I can see anything I want. That ain't true. You ain't going to see everything you want. You're only going to see what I'm comfortable with and because that's my body. And that's one of the things that for me, they come up there and they're like, well, I wanted to see this. Well, okay, I understand you want to see this. I'm flattered that you wanted to see this, but that's not what I'm comfortable but with. No. That's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> and there are a lot of no. people that are like, oh, you'll get there. You'll get there. You'll get there. I'm a year and a half in. I still have the same boundaries. I mean- I might have been a little bit edgy here and there, maybe showed a little side move more than normal or whatever. <laughs> but for the most part, my boundaries have stayed pretty strong and I feel really good about them. But in the end, for me personally, that means that knowing myself and knowing my boundaries in that way, I'm able to then say, I'm okay. I'm okay with what's out there. I'm okay with these videos being out there because I was comfortable making them. I don't ever want to make anything where I think, Oh, I really shouldn't have done that. I really shouldn't have videoed that and put it on the internet. So for other creators, I want other women to know if they ever start an OnlyFans, you make your boundaries. And I'm, I'm also expensive as hell. As you should be. I'm so expensive, Eric. People shit on the fact that I'm so expensive. A video, a one minute video, $60 for no nudity and no sex. And I don't even talk in my videos. It is just me clapping and shaking ass in the thong. I said you I set those prices. And they notice before they Yeah, actually you can read. You can read my um my entire pinned wall price list and what and how much everything is before you subscribe. You can see those, but you can't see like the pictures. And so I tell people all the time, they're like, hey, what's on your OnlyFan? I'm like, you can actually click the link and you can read. You can't see pictures, but you can get an idea of what the prices are and what you're gonna be getting for those prices. But when I set the prices, I thought, this is so high. All these people asking me for content. I can say, yes, I make content, but it's expensive. And they're going to be like, oh, that's too expensive. And nobody's ever going to buy. And then I'll say, well, I tried. Oh, they started paying. Then they started actually paying for the videos. And I thought. There's a lot of people. There, there, there's a lot of men that are willing to pay top dollar. But then, yeah. then you, you got, you know, the cheapos that won't, that will say it's expensive. Men are going to buy whatever they want to buy. It don't matter what the cost. Yeah. For me, that's where I ended up settling is, okay, what do I 
want to sell my videos for? What do I feel comfortable this video, the way my, my ass jiggles in this specific video, what would I be okay with selling this for? And that's just where I set my prices and my prices are high and unapologetically so. And so that's just, you can set your boundaries and you can say, if you want to pay them, I never pressure anybody to buy my stuff ever. You're on my page and you say, I just told somebody today, Eric, I said, I said, oh, he said, I get it. You're, 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 you're beautiful. I just can't afford it. And I said, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not saying you have There's to no buy. There's no love loss, no, no hate. You just can't. But it, it, if, as I long get as it's it. a I respectful I exchange. I couldn't afford it either. You know, I wouldn't want to buy those videos of someone either. But I'm not going to change how I view my own personal value for, for your pocketbook. Um, and so, you know, no pressure. You don't have to buy. But it is it's just kind of where I am in life. So I do have cheaper stuff. You know, I have stuff, TikTok length videos where I'll make a TikTok and then I'll go do it over on OnlyFans and a thong. And it's like 15 the, the bucks, X-rated version. 10, 15 kinda. dollars. And so I do small prices and my, my prices range, but overall it is, it is expensive comparatively. What do you think the biggest misconception of OnlyFans is? Oh, I think, and, and it's it's on OnlyFans on, and, and on Instagram and on TikTok and on social media in general. The number one comment that I get that's the biggest misconception is, oh, you're just ass. That's all you know. That's all you're worth. That's full on bullshit. I'm so much deeper as a person. It's social media. They, they're not, they're not going to see it's that though. Social we know media. that. They're not like you're going to get way. the parts of me that I give you on social media. There's so much more to me. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a second degree black belt. I had a 10 year business where. So you could fight. Ah, nah, not you. <laughs> you can, I don't, I I don't know. I know a few G spots that I can I don't, get. I don't know. I have black belt. I'm like, okay, you can fight. Yeah. Yeah. But I I created a 10-year-long hair business that I taught myself on YouTube. I make cakes. I do interior design. I'm fluent in sign language. I, I like I said, I have a degree in biblical, you know, studies. I sign there's language. So much more. I've traveled the world. I've worked with international students all over the world. I I'm very familiar with so many more things. So the biggest biggest misconception is, well, you are ass. Oh, I sing. I sing. Like singing is a huge portion of my life. And I've actually sang on my OnlyFans page. I sang on Christmas Eve and gave them all a video of me. Like to me, oh man, part of why I do what I do is because I know what's on the other side of the screen. Some people just need connection. And so on Christmas Eve, I'll be in a thong, but I'm singing Merry Christmas. I'm singing. Happy See, a lot of people don't know that about you. That, that you can sing and you can sing very well. Thank you. Not saying that you have to give us a sample, but I'm not going <laughs> to stop you either if you want to. But um, I caught wind of that. Um, I don't remember what video it was, but I'm like, wow, I didn't, I didn't, you would never know because, like you say, you put on social media what you want to put on social media. Mm -hmm. I actually thought about creating a separate page for singing. And I went to um, a conference for TikTokers in July or in June. And I asked a lady, her platform is comedy, but she also sings and plays the piano. Um, her name's Sheena. And I asked her, I said, would you create a separate TikTok account for singing? Or would you put them together? And she said, your people want to know who you are as a person. And if singing is also a part of who you are, even if it's also the weight loss and the body positivity, but if singing is a part of who you are, put it on your page. It's just another part of who you are. And that's what I started doing is I was like, okay, well, I'm going to randomly mix in these videos of me singing because singing is such a huge part of my life. And I grew up singing in the church. And so the majority of my, you know, my singing career has been gospel music and hymns and church music. Um, but singing has been a huge, huge portion of my life. And that's something that I'm still continuing to pursue. I still make connections in Nashville. I live near Nashville and trying to meet people and get into those circles. And, and that's something that I would love. I would love to keep, to keep doing. That's what I was going to ask you. Like if you ever thought about pursuing it professionally, like. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I don't know. It could, it could definitely work. Yeah. It could definitely work. I have I, I have quite a few um, connections. I talk to music producers and and large artists. Um, I did I 
did get flown to New York to sing a hook on a song at one point back in October. I don't know if, if or when that song will ever come out, but um, yeah, no, no, no. Music is, is a huge. Can part you of say for who, or you can't? No, no, okay. probably not. I respect if, that. If, 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 if it if it comes out, yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I have respect for them. Um, and so, but yeah, I would love, I would love to. That's one of my big goals. I would love to sing on a stage. Small goal first. Sing, sing on a stage in Nashville. I want to get paid to sing in Nashville, uh, and then from there, Nashville. who knows? Who knows? Going back to OnlyFans, right? Yeah. A lot of young ladies, they feel that it's easy to do. And it's as simple as creating it in a, creating an account because there are a lot of successful OnlyFans yeah. women. So they think they get the idea that, okay, like I guess right out of high school, whatever the case may be, I don't have to do nothing. I could create this account, mm -hmm. take my clothes off, and I'll become rich. What do you think? Do you think there's any truth to that? It's no, no. Okay, so my I take my OnlyFans personally, but also this is because I run my own OnlyFans page. That's that's a big portion of the amount of time that I put into my OnlyFans page. It would take me less time if I handed my page off to an agency, and I've interviewed probably ten different agencies. But for me personally, I can't present myself in any false light. That, that would make me very uncomfortable. And so the closest thing that I got to handing off my OnlyFans page, the company wanted to not let my subscribers know that the switch had happened, uh -huh. that it had moved from talking to me to talking to them. And they wanted to basically pretend to be me, which is what a lot of the pages are. And I think the majority of subscribers know that they're not actually talking to the person. But for me, I said, no. I. That's kind I, of new info for me. I, I, I didn't know that companies could take over somebody's OnlyFans and then you you're not you're not they're not no, you're, interacting you're, you're, no more. That really? Yeah. I would say a very more than Damn, 50, that, that, more than fifty percent of the OnlyFans pages that are successful are the person who runs it, they never log in. The company tells them, I need you to make this, this and this, send us the videos, they edit it, they post it, they talk to people, they pick the prices. Oh yeah, Damn, yeah, yeah, that's heartbreaking to some some I, people when, who don't. When know I that. announced on my OnlyFans page, I did an announcement that, hey guys, I was gonna let my I was gonna let this company take over my OnlyFans page, and they were gonna pretend to be me. That's how they were gonna continue to making me more money. They they wanted to um, emotionally manipulate. They had like an actual term for it that they want to emotionally manipulate the people into believing that I was kind of a girlfriend. They wanted the girlfriend experience and that I would hit on them and flirt with them. I can't exist in a world where I'm talking, where someone thinks they're talking to me. That's me. That's my image. That's my personhood. And think that I'm like falling for them or that I care about them, but I don't even know they exist. Yeah, that's false. That's also that AI chatbot stuff. I've turned down that opportunity where you can give basic information about yourself and then an AI bot will pretend to be you. And AI people, is getting scary. It's so scary. Maybe I'm old school. Maybe I'm old school and they, I want to talk to real swaps. people. They got they, voice ooh, swaps. The deep they, fake stuff. Man, I can't do it. And so I told my OnlyFans people, I was like, guys, it's me. You're going to have to come to an understanding that, like for instance, like right now, I spend the whole day getting ready doing this. People are buying stuff on my OnlyFans page, but they have to wait. They're going to have to wait it's for crazy. me to it's open up passive. my OnlyFans to send them the videos. But they know now that it's worth the wait because they know it's me that they're talking to. So I told them, and I had a hundred men respond to that video, and they say, wait a minute, other OnlyFans pages aren't run by these women? I'm like, no, baby. No, they're not. You're not talking to them. It got to be overwhelming, though, because it's even... It's so overwhelming. With, with, I, I, I understand... <sighs> I understand why women hand off their OnlyFans. That's why I interviewed because it is so much work, and it and, is. And, and dudes are on there twenty four seven wanting. It's not enough my, time my, in the my day. Dicks in my hand right now. I sent you money. Send it to me now, and so that's where the companies come in. They're easy access. You get it, and you're satisfied in that instance. Um, so I get I get why people use agencies. I'm not saying anything bad about the content creators who use them or the agencies themselves. All I'm saying is for me, 
personally. That's where I like, you're just going to have to wait for the video because it's me and I was out to dinner. Like, I don't know what to tell you. And they're so kind. I had a really busy weekend this weekend. It was one of my busiest weekends. They were kind? They yes, some of my guys yo, are kind. Yo, I know I've showed you when, a lot of the when, bad when ones. When men when men want to come out of, and, and they and they gotta wait to come, I <laughs> they, don't, I they, don't they know. They get snippy sometimes. It's like yo, it's like you said, it's in my hand right now. Was yeah, I'm running yeah, out yeah. of time. The amount of DMs I have from each platform in the beginning, like when I first started on social media, it was easy to respond to comments because sure it was doable. But now I can't. So it's I, impossible. I, I can only imagine horny men in an inbox. Like how, how do you find the time or how much time do you dedicate to that to, so that it's you? Because that like, like yourself, I never want to have anybody run my account. I want mm-hmm. people to know when they, it's me when they get a response. Because there are also Instagram accounts. There are, there are companies that have asked <laughs> right. to run my Instagram and DM the people in my Instagrams too. I want I want it to be authentic. I don't want you to be talking to an AI or mm-hmm. somebody pretending Same. to be me. So yeah. how do you, do you dedicate a certain amount of time a day to do that? Um, I don't particularly, but I do try to dig through every once in a while. I do have an assistant that works part time for me. And one of the things that she helps me do sometimes is sift DMs. She doesn't answer them but i you know i'll have her i'll be like hey for the next hour i need you to go through the tiktok dms at one point i had like five thousand tiktok dms i didn't even open i just couldn't it got overwhelming and, but there were companies that would reach out or there were verified accounts that were trying to get to to meet me or whatever so i couldn't just select all delete mm-hmm. and so every once in a while i'll be like can you just take the next hour to scroll and move anything into my inbox that you would find? She knows a couple of my parameters. If they're asking me about this or this or they're, they're whatever. And she would help me do that. Um, but now Instagram DMS are tricky. I answer all of my only fans DMS. That's because I keep up with that on a day to day basis. That's not super overwhelming. Um, but Instagram DMS is so funny. I know you know this, but the way Instagram's DMS are, categorized yeah, where yeah. they take a dm and they put it they're like all these folders you have your request you have your hidden folders you have your verified accounts you have mm-hmm. people get so angry when you don't respond to your demon you're like babe you have no idea i never saw it it's nowhere in existence these are people without followings that don't understand there that. are people that are do have followings and still get buried i had somebody that had like five million followers dm me never saw it DM'd me again three months later, and then it popped up somehow at the right time. And I thought, I'm so sorry I never saw your DM. DMs, it's, are, it's all about timing. It's, because yes. if you DM me now, maybe an hour later, you're going to be at the bottom. Whatever new DMs you're come, buried. they're going to they're gonna push you yeah. to the bottom, and people don't yeah. understand that. Yeah, I stopped responding. To, kind of my general rule is I don't respond to any profile that's blank. Yeah. No profile picture. So no. No followers, no posts. So, Every somebody's... once in a while, you might have somebody that asks me a genuine question that I'm like, they need help. I could answer this question and I'll answer it. But overall, that's kind of my general rule. If somebody is a creator and or or they're, you know, I have people that are have lost weight or and they reach out, I'll talk to them. Absolutely. I'll make those connections. But it's impossible. You can't catch everybody. I know for a fact there's what's your most common dm from a man i would say that the number one dm that i get <laughs> so funny like a lot of people are just hi hi or they'll send an emoji i'm like I'm never going to respond to that just just h i yeah. like I, I never hi. understand that like, like give me give me a i need introduce a chapter yourself yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah why are you dming me where yeah what, what, what came up but um yeah, no, I do get a, also get a lot of people asking about my OnlyFans. Once my OnlyFans was accessible through the link in my bio, those slowed down quite a bit. Um, I get a, a wide variety, but I would say the majority of the DMs that come in just say hi or hello or and it and I and I feel bad because there are some very genuine people that are like, I really love your journey. I really appreciate you. They're they very much hype me up. They're very kind, blank profile, no posts no pictures. As many of those come in, I can't, I can't open them all and and respond to all of them. So yeah. I've had people try to trick me into open DMs because you know how 
when when they write you a DM, you can see like one line. Yeah. Some of them will write, they will put like 10 exclamation points and say urgent. And I'm like, what is this? Gotcha. And you have to click it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they'll send gotcha. a video or a picture. Oh, that's also something that's in my DMs. Yeah. Pictures and videos that I did not ask for. I've learned that women also do that. Now, I can't I've, believe. I mean, I've I can't always, believe that. I've always heard like, you know, men send women unsolicited pics. Yep. But I thought that was just a one-sided thing, but it's not. Yeah, I did not. too, until, you, until I've heard differently from male content creators. I'm like, wow, women do that too? Wow. They do. Yeah, and they, yeah. they it's, 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 Maybe it's it not works even for a hello. Them. Maybe it worked for them at some point with one person, it but does, for me, that's, I'm that's like, why no, they that's do not going to work it, for me. It, it's not even a hello. It's like titties. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a picture. See, like, <laughs> I've, thought, I've thought about doing a, a like a series where because you know when somebody DMs you you have to accept or decline the request and mm -hmm. you can't see the picture it's just like a blank screen I right. thought about doing is it did a dick or is it not and doing a series and be like I'm gonna accept it because then when you accept it the picture will pop up you know why well, I've gotten dick are. pics before I don't know why I've gotten dick pics you're attractive to men too <laughs> yeah but may maybe it's because I've posted some questionable content and i and i've i've stared away from posting that kind of content because mm -hmm. i realized that not that i care that people question my sexuality but i don't want to lead no one on correct right, because right, right. it's fair i've also like posted stuff you know about you know gay men trans women and i've had a young lady a young trans woman talking to me for some time and then they you know try to say hey maybe we should and i'm like you know, I'm, that's that's not for me. I mm -hmm. respect that. And then, so they was asking, so you just curious? And I'm like, no. But I guess from like certain videos I make that led them to believe sure. that maybe I am a little curious. And I had, so not, not that I have an issue with it. I just... I'm like, you know, let me just stop doing this kind of, because I don't, I don't want to mislead anybody. Yeah, that's fair. That's very fair. And I felt like, Maybe that's why the dick pics came in. Like, so you one, had like a little wave of them. Listen, one came in and this thing was huge, man. This guy. <laughs> oh, I've seen. This I've guy, seen it all. One thing I do is dick me a, Right, he he sent me, and I wrote him back. I'm like, yo, <laughs> what did you, you say? <laughs> you gonna make somebody very happy, or or or, or you go or, or you gonna hurt them a lot. But shout out to you, man. Do your thing. That's bad. <laughs> but I'm for the ladies, baby. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. that's it. And, and he just laughed, man. It was cool. I've gotten I've gotten nudes from uh trans women before also. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, Some people are just exhibitionists and they really like the idea I of you I laying it. eyes. So actually, even on my OnlyFans page, I have a little copy and paste graphic that I use. A lot of guys. I think they send those pictures because they just want to know that you saw it. They just want to know that you saw it. And so on my OnlyFans page, I do dick rates. I was about to ask you that. Yeah, I do dick rates. And so <laughs> you have to pay me to look at it. And because on OnlyFans, as well as on Instagram, you can only see the picture if you touch it and you click on it and open it. And so if somebody sends me a picture, I say, I have a little thing. If I do not open media unless you've paid for a rate... Um, yeah. What's the rate scale though? Is it like a one to ten, one to five? Okay, so listen. Two I, dicks up. In, <laughs> uh, what I is should it? change it to that. Two, That's so clever. Two, two dicks, dicks up. up. I don't know. Somebody needs to take that because that was very clever. Um, so I, when I did my OnlyFans page, my OnlyFans page, and all the agencies that have checked it out, they look at it and they say. I don't know where you got this format, why you do things the way that you do on your OnlyFans page. It's unlike any other page that's on OnlyFans. And I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know. I just started it and I thought, what makes sense to me? And so when somebody said, do you do dick rates? I didn't even know what it was the first time. It's like, what do you mean? What do you mean I dick rate? And they were like, well, I send you a picture and give you a tip and you tell me what you think about it. And I was like, oh, uh, I, I, I don't know. Understand. I asked that person and was like, I don't know. Is it like a one to 10 scale or what? And and so, yeah, they were. So since then, no, I've just created like a, I created a system. It's like, what is, what is it? I, I can understand 
what it may do for them. Like if mm -hmm. if it's coming from you and they find you attractive. Yeah, yeah if I oh, raise them gave a, me a, a nine. She gave my dick a, yeah, 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 I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. the lowest you gave out? Mm, I think a four. I think a four is the lowest. I've Damn, ever what makes it a four? Oh, uh, no, I don't want to talk too much about okay, that. Okay, 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 okay. I like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, but it's, it's just crazy the things, like you said, people will pay to watch you walk. People will, will pay you to rate them. Dude, I'm like, you're paying me to, to, to give my opinion on your dick? <sighs> All right, sure, why not? <laughs> I wish if I... I wish if I could now, there are be a lot in of that women position. who don't want to see it. And I don't mind it. For me, I'm not super visual. I'm not looking at those and thinking, oh, that's like, I just don't. It's me. That's just me. So it's very business. So my rate is very business. I've heard some women don't even like dick pics at all. Like, the Probably. There's some dozen, guys. It does nothing for me. Some guys don't, don't. Uh, some women, no, some guys don't like pussy pictures either. Mm -hmm. Some just think that the whole vagina is ugly. Like to each their own. Yeah, Everybody's I get on it. their own. For me, I'm not going to open up a picture and be like, I want to marry this person because of this picture they just I, I think that's the <laughs> idea when they when they send, like, I, I, don't, I don't know I if have been expected. impressed. I have been impressed. <laughs> not necessarily turned on. Right. But like. Damn, dude, what you got? Okay, good for you. And I have no problem teasing them and be like, that must be heavy, you know, like. But it's fun. It, it, it's it is. playful. Sometimes, it's very playful. It's sometimes a good word I, for I it. wonder if they if they want me to respond with, like, yo, you need to come <laughs> shove that in my ass or something. I don't, I, I'm, not a, I'm not sure what you. Yeah, was, I don't know what they want either. Yeah, like, I actually have, you know, once so, you get a million of them, I mean, I've probably seen 5,000 dicks. Once you see, maybe it's not that lot, many, lot, maybe not, lot. maybe not that it's many, easily a thousand, <laughs> it's a lot. easily a thousand, hands down, easily. I've seen that many just in my DMs, but like I, every once in a while I'll mess with someone, you know, I'll be like, oh, you caught me in a mood. I'll be like, I've sent dick pics back. I'd be like, oh, I like that. Look how hard you made me. <laughs> 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 or I'll say, or I'll, or I'll say like, is that as hard as it gets? <laughs> <laughs> I've I've had a man send me a video of him giving oral to another guy. Mind you, I didn't know what was in this video because you, you can't do. see it until you hit play. I know. He told me, I, I just want to get your opinion on something when I click play. <laughs> oh that my image God. is in your head forever. It's still there right now. Yeah, you it's picked <laughs> I, I I think... I don't think the image is there more than the sound, though. The sound. <laughs> That's what stuck with you, huh? The sound. Should I even? Should, should I even? Yeah. Should I even right. do the sound? Just like seriously, what the hell? It it was like a very deep gagging, wet. Like I can't get it out of my head, man. It's just <laughs> he's still, he's over like, and over. He like glazed like, over. He's like, I can't even stop. I can't even make myself. I just not say, think yo, you it. you did your thing, man. You did your yeah, thing. Yeah. I don't. I, I say. I don't know. I don't know. What, you, I don't know what to tell you. Good you job. Did your Two thing. dicks up. <laughs> Two dicks up. Two it dicks was, up. But it, it it definitely gets wild in yeah. in the the DMs. You have to you have to learn. It's you have to learn. You've put yourself out there publicly. People have thoughts in their heads. You have to learn to roll with some things. I mean, you just have to be okay with. I'm not going to, I mean, it's irritating if, if they're really rude or something then I'll get upset, but most of the time I'm just like block, block. I, I block. If I, if I open your message and it is a picture that I did not ask for, you just get blocked. I'm like, oh, block, block, block. I block. I probably block Sometimes 10 to I, 20 dicks a day. I'll open it just to see. Sure. So they could see that I read it and then mm -hmm. don't and, and respond, respond at all. That's almost like, better sometimes. <gasps> He didn't say anything. <clears throat> no, not at all. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I left you hanging. Yep, yep. So before we run out of time, yeah, let me ask you some of these. Oh yeah, questions. Oh gosh, the wild. Speaking of the wild, wild west on social media, people yeah. asking questions. People, some of no, these some are of just more, some of them are very good. Let's focus on the ones that have actual, genuine, good questions because. You know, this is the first real big interview I've done where people have heard me speak and talk about myself and so I know they have genuine questions. We can we can answer them. Most of the time they don't they don't hear me speak. 
they just they just see these videos so they they have no idea of who I am or who you are. I think that's why, you know, sometimes these podcasts are great mm-hmm. like machines to help people understand who you are cuz sometimes you'll see a celebrity or whatever and you have this idea about them. Like I've seen plenty like rappers interviews and I'm like this person's a piece of shit. Then when I hear them and I talk and, and they're talking and they're going back and forth, I'm like, this guy is smart, man. Like yeah. I, I misjudge this person. Correct. So it's a good way to judge people based off of one minute clips. And I, and, I, and honestly, and I you have. can't even, and, and people are going to watch this and then they're going to make more assumptions and make more judgments. You can only do what you're going to do. People, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, I am who I am. So one of the questions that, um, a fan sent in was, can you share your upper body workouts you do? Oh, 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 yeah. So actually, part of what I still do, I know that we talked about the fact that I we did the weight loss and then we moved into OnlyFans, but, and my singing, part of my platform is still posting workout videos. They might be where the angle is the ass, but I am still in the gym. I am still working on toning up my arms. And so you can follow me. Um, and see, I will very often post the different types of arm workouts that I do. I'm trying to get to the point actually on my YouTube channel where you can, you know, when you're in the gym, you do, or what I do as part of my system is I'll do three sets of a workout. Let's say we're doing, um, dumbbell curls. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do, uh, a pick, get my weight and then I'm going to do 10 and I'm going to take a break. And I'm going to do 10 more. And then I take a break. And then I do 10 more. Those are three sets. These are things that I learned in the last year. I didn't realize they were called sets, reps, blah, 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 <laughs> which seems so simple to some people, but yeah. not people who don't have experience in the gym. And so I only record one of, I actually try to record my third set. It pushes me so that I'm, 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 I'm my exhausting point, but I want to do well for the video. And so I record my third set of any exercise and then you use those videos. They're usually like a minute long and you use them to clip down to make short TikToks and Instagram posts and mm-hmm. reels. But I have been working, my my assistant has been working and we're trying to work with um, a con- some content creator editors for YouTube to splice together the fact that all of my workouts, I have easily like five to 10 minutes worth of you can actually see the reps that I'm doing. You can see the exercises that I'm doing and putting them together. So my YouTube is probably the best place to find my workouts and you can see more consistently, okay, she just did eight reps, but on TikTok, I only posted one. Like I'm not gonna do eight yeah, dumbbell curls on a TikTok, but the, my YouTube- That'll take up like, a lot of video. It people, does, people, and, but YouTube is more long form. So that's definitely- People attention get, span is pretty short too. They yeah. don't- Long form's coming back. I'm surprised. There, there are some it videos is. that are much longer that I was like, nobody's going to watch this. And they do. Okay, another question someone okay. wants to know. What is your favorite outfits out of all the outfits that you post? Ooh, I really like clothes. I really enjoy fashion. I really enjoy putting things together. So that's a very hard question. I would say one of my favorite outfits. I do like my leather leggings. They're really popular, and I actually really enjoy wearing them. They're very comfortable, and I like the way that they look on me. So my leather leggings and jeans. Jeans are a big part of my platform as well, and I enjoy a good fitting pair of jeans, and I've found a company that I really I really like my jeans. Um, what about the forbidden pants? The forbidden pants are such a, such <laughs> Is that a, what they call? What they do you, are. What the, do you type in when you go to buy those? You can type in forbidden pants. You can type in pattern pants or flare pants. Those are the three things that like when I'm on Amazon and I'm like, oh, I need another pair of these. Um, yeah, those are, those were not usually, those were not originally a huge part of my wardrobe, but shout out to one of my followers. He knows who he is. He contacted me and he bought me my first pair of flare pants and he said, you'll thank me later. Go to the store. Those, those I was are wild at the pants. store with my with my camera. This is probably two months into being on Instagram, and I went to the store and I videoed and I said, I was like, "Is this what you're talking about?" He said, "Yes." They were like fifteen dollars, and he said, "Take those home and do a video." He said, "Send me a picture. That's my that's my freebie. Send me a picture of you in the pants." 
and then do a video. And I had a video hit, hit a million views on TikTok in those pants. And I looked at, I, he now, he, that's his, that's his like, he still comes back. Those. He was like, you can thank me later. You, those forbidden pants. I told you. But yeah, I, I realized, I mean, those are demon pants. They're comfortable. Yeah. They're soft. I got to get me a pair movement. just to see how they feel. They're a little hypnotic. I think that's kind of the draw to them because the pattern and the way you move and the way everything moves, it's kind of hypnotic. Because women put those pants on and they, and they, 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 they they do that move with their legs. It just <laughs> That's so you, funny. So that move that you're talking about, I know what you're talking about. It's the yeah. thigh. It's the thigh jiggle. I tried that move, man. It's not it's not easy to accomplish. Like I, all of those moves I've learned since being on TikTok. I watch tutorials and I'll be like, how's that woman doing her legs? Oh, okay, I'm gonna try that. And part of my platform is me making videos of me trying things that Learning I just look stuff. goofy as hell doing. But it's fun. It's fun for me. And also, I mean, 30 minutes of trying some twerking moves is a cardio workout. I'll turn my I'll turn my watch on and be like, I wonder how many calories I'm burning while I'm doing this TikTok. Twerking is not easy. Oh, no, no, I've no, tried. no, 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 I can't. Yeah, I've I have tried. so much more respect for like dancers on it, like backup <laughs> dancers who do that stuff. I'm like, these people are in shape. Ask her who her favorite black celebrity is. I'm immediately so many people come to mind. <laughs> and it's just like they were all for different reasons. Like I thought of. I really like Miles Davis. I really, I really love jazz music. Um, Nina Simone for her singing. Immediately, my mind went to went to went to musicians. Yeah, I uh, see. <laughs> I, 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 th I think I think that was where my natural my natural um, instinct went was to musicians. Um, as far as I like, I mean, the question is depending on why they would be my favorite. Is it just purely right. because they want to know who I find attractive? Like who's the sexiest person that I, but, but my mind went immediately to like someone that I would respect for their music. Yeah. yeah maybe Nina Simone, Miles Davis. Favorite book. Favorite book. Um, if you follow my platform very long, it doesn't take long to figure out. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I love the Harry Potter series. I have a Harry Potter tattoo. I love the movies. Oh, the movies. Everybody, people, people everybody's going to say, say that. It's not the I book. know it's not the books. The movies are great. I, I, I have very reading. strong opinions on some parts of the movies, but that's not what this podcast is I believe is about. it. And, and the people who who read, who enjoy reading, mm -hmm. they will always debate the movie to the book. I've never heard a not, person say the movie's better than the book. Right. Yeah. But me, who I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm a visual person. I got to mm -hmm. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love movies. If... If they had pictures in the book, I know that sounds very childish. <laughs> I could read a Harry Potter book well. with pictures. I get it. Yep. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's hard for me to get into it because now I have to make the visual myself mm -hmm. through reading these like words. I actually like audio books more than reading. I'm not a huge, huge reader. Um, People but, told me that I should get into audio books, but that would involve me reading again. Yeah. I'm like, I can't. They don't know how much work goes into creating audio books, the amount of time oh, you got to be. You're talking about because your voice reading. Right. Oh, that's the the strain and the, and the exhaustion that would come from doing that. I can imagine people you, you also got, have said. So it's funny. I know you're very well known for your voice. I get this is another thing. There are a couple things that I've learned about myself from TikTok. One, I'm pigeon toed. Yeah. I, you learned that from TikTok? Yes. I could have told you that. I had no idea. I had no idea my whole <laughs> life. And everybody's Tiffany's in the background cracking up. <laughs> I had no idea. I never watched myself walk from behind. Yep. So I didn't know I was pigeon toed. And I also didn't realize that people like my talking voice. People, people, I get a lot of people that that ask me for audios. So I you know, sometimes do audios and, and my talking voice. So, yeah. Well, see audios like that, but you don't, but you still, you like reading, even if it was that, but mm -hmm. when you, when you can do something like that, it's not scripted. You just, yeah. you're just speaking to them and it's not going to take that much out of you as to where if you, if I'm reading Harry Potter from front to back, I'm in there for no 24 mistakes. hours. Oh, no God. skip ups. Oh goodness. Nope. Nope. Okay, so what's your best piece of advice for a young lady who's thinking about starting an OnlyFans? Um, I think my best piece of advice would be to think it through carefully first. Um, definitely understand that 
whatever you put out there could potentially be out there for everyone to see at some point. I mean, there are leaks, there are hackers. So don't ever put or record anything. If I, I imagine if someone comes to me and says, what are things to consider? You have to be okay with it being out there publicly. You have to be okay with it leaking at some point. Don't ever, ever make or record yourself doing something that you don't feel comfortable with. That would be my biggest piece of advice. And, and set your boundaries and allow yourself to say no. You can say no to requests and it doesn't matter. Um, who was I talking to? It was your you. Your your choice. It was Tiffany. It was Tiffany. When I was, when I was talking to Tiffany on the phone, we were talking about, I told the people, I was like, hey, you can, you can send in your custom requests. I'm not sure we're going to have a whole lot of time for customs. But in the process, I said, big money doesn't mean broken boundaries. Big money doesn't equal broken boundaries. You can sit here and tell me, I mean, I get propositioned all the time. You can throw out whatever number you want to throw out. And I've seen some very, very large numbers. Don't I can imagine. Don't let your don't let your conviction on where you feel comfortable, don't let your comfort zone shift for dollar signs. That's a big piece of advice. Genuinely ask yourself, what am I comfortable with? What am I not comfortable with? And stick to it. You won't regret it. You won't regret sticking to your to your boundaries. So last but not least, where are you originally from? Um, I'm originally from Kentucky, so I'm a I'm a Kentucky girl. Uh, I live closer to Nashville now, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a Kentucky. I'm a I'm a wildcat. I'm a wildcat at heart. BBN baby. <laughs> Shout out to Kentucky. <laughs> Shout out to Kentucky and Nashville. I love Nashville. I'm I'm a lot closer to Nashville now. That's where I visit mostly. How's the weather there right now? Is it cold? What's what's the weather normally? When I left my house, I drove out of a sheet of ice uh, mm. driveway. It's currently what January. 21st and when i pulled out of my house to come to fly to florida it was a sheet of ice so i'm enjoying the weather down here i'm a summer girl i like the sunshine i like swimming i like being in, in the heat well I, I definitely appreciate you coming to florida and being on a it podcast it is my honor like this I was really appreciate there it there was no question once you offered it once you i i need to say that the reason I'm here and the reason that people are watching you is because of what you do. And I know that you know this, but I want to say it to you in front of everyone. Means a lot. What you do is super important. Like you, your audio clips, the videos that you post, the women that you represent, that you put out there, the way that you talk about females and the female body and the things, the things that you say, I'm like, I ain't even told anybody I was self-conscious about that. But he knew, <laughs> like that little meat on the inside of your thighs, you said. I pay attention. Like, I know. I know. But like when you do that, it it sticks. You know that that person that said, oh, he's so skinny. They said one thing and it stuck. But now you're reversing that and you're saying, y'all need to hear a different thing. And that's important. It's really important. And please keep doing that and keep being positive in that way. I know that there are women walking around in shorts because of you. There are women around putting on those crop tops that they always wanted to wear with that roll hanging over that <laughs> feel that way because of your content. So keep doing it. So keep doing it. That's why I'm I'm cool. I'm cool being I'm cool being here with you. I'm cool sitting <laughs> sitting side by side with you and associating with you. Shout out to me and <laughs> shout out to you. Yes, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you. And that has been episode two of Sensational Talk. Thank and that's you so a wrap. Much.